just want to know why are we not important enough for him to show up for us when we showed up for him. We voted for him. We walked door to door. We was out here advocating for him to be the next mayor of the city of Chicago. He has not showed up for us for anything. We had to battle the floods by ourselves. We have to battle this violence by ourselves. He doesn't help us do anything. And I want to know what he's going to do about this. I was one of the first Windy City cheerleaders on the on the first team they even had. This is what these kids need for this community. We got violence, we got poverty, we already getting scrapped. Why do we always got to be at the bottom of the barrel? Upset and fed up that these immigrants are coming to America and they are getting treated better than us people that built this country. I cannot believe y'all gonna allow and y'all gonna treat these immigrants that just came here and you guys are gonna treat them better than the people who are the foundation of America and who have built this country i cannot believe you do you feel black voters are underestimated oh absolutely you can't continue to take black voters for granted and think that all you have to do is emotionally rouse us and then in some way that that's going to lead to a victory we're beyond that we want what everybody else wants we want policies that are going to actually support and lift up our communities <laughs> Every African-American citizen in this country is entitled to a government that puts their jobs, wages, and security first. One of the greatest betrayals has been the issue of immigration. Illegal immigration violates the civil rights of African-Americans. Hey, my beautiful people, it's your girl Venice Gova is back again, and we are the queens and kings in the house, the men at work. Well, actually, today I got my favorite one. I got the man himself, Mr. Paradise, a filmmaker, a philanthropist, a corner creator. He's best from Boston. Well, I'm happy to be with you. Say so hi to my people. Yeah, thanks so much for having me. It's Paradise, filmmaker, content creator, philanthropist. Super excited to be here, and I'm happy to see where this conversation goes. Well, today I chose to be with you because you're the man in the system, the man out there, the man you know what's going on out there. And we've all seen, we've all had, and we've all witnessed what's going on out there in the States. We've seen the mayor of Chicago. He's being decampaigned and Tiffany, they're being decampaigned because of um, the migrants. The Democrats are losing their numbers. Well, the way they're acting, it seems to be the case. So what they want to do is get more people into the country to become democratic. And when they do, well, they'll show their loyalty to the Democratic Party. So these migrants and these safe havens for migrants, it's good for them. A lot of people in the black community don't necessarily feel that way. They're all being decampaigned because of the migrants that came in in the States. And we've seen the population is rising and all the stuff like that. But actually, actually what I've witnessed is like there is so much hate within the black Americans towards the migrants. Do black Americans have an issue with immigrants? Jealousy. Black Americans living in communities with a strong immigrant population is not a new phenomenon. This has been going on since the early 1900s with the Great Migration, where thousands and millions of black Americans moved from the American South to northern, midwestern, and western states. But there were already hundreds of free black communities all across the Americas before these poor white immigrants even arrived. So what happened? Jealousy. They even tended to call them illegal go immigrants right well actually why well, i feel like that 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 thing was so unnecessarily and that thing is so outdated. How can you call someone illegal? New York just kicked hundreds of kids out of school so they could use the building to house illegal immigrants instead. No, that's not a Babylon Bee article. This really happened at James Madison High School in New York City. I don't care what your politics, how does that not enrage you? We are taking resources meant for American kids and giving it to people who shouldn't even be here. And people will make excuses for this. If you need somewhere to send them, how about back? 
back to their country of origin. It's just unbelievable. When are we going to stop being the world's charity and start taking care of, I don't know, our own children? So the immigration issue yeah. is obviously a big issue and any any leader that's running for office has to have the has to have that issue at, at front to talk about immigration and f find out what they're going to do. In your first 100 days as president, what will you do to create a pathway to citizenship for many undocumented immigrants. I'm going to send a legislative immigration reform bill to Congress to provide a roadmap to citizenship for 11 million undocumented immigrants who contribute so much to this country, including 1.7 million, 1.7 million AAPI. My immigration policy is built around keeping families together, modernizing the immigration system by keeping families, unification, and diversity as pillars of our immigration system, which it used to be. Ending Trump's cruel and humane policy at the border to rip children from their mother's arms. Take immediate action to protect dreamers, including the more than 100,000 eligible dreamers from East and South Asia. Rescinding the un-American Muslim ban immediately. Restoring refugee admission in line with the values and historic leadership of our country, raising the target to a minimum of 125,000 people a year. So I, I do see the situation in Chicago, but it's not unique. That's okay. actually happening all over the world. Mm. Same as the state of Massachusetts. Yeah. There's also a lot of immigrants coming in from Haiti specifically in large numbers. They didn't have to go farther left with Brandon Johnson. Why did you vote for him? I voted for Brandon Johnson because I knew him. I voted for Brandon Johnson because I thought that he would be good for Chicago. I voted for Brandon Johnson because really, I didn't do my homework. Because had I done my homework and paid attention to the alliances and who he was with oh, and who groomed him, I would have known better and I would have voted differently. And that brings me um, to the challenge of really standing up and not just saying to Chicagoans or Illinoisans, but to all voters in this country, it is time for us to stand up and to vote our self-interest. We vote along party lines, especially as African Americans, and that needs to change. We need to start voting for people who are going to promote our self-interest. And that may not be a Democrat, and it may not be a Republican. It may be an independent candidate. It may be a Green Party candidate. But I think that now we have come to a point in this country where we have to stop marrying ourselves to party, stop voting along ethnic lines, mm -hmm. because we're seeing that that is not working for us. And so that is why I will be voting Republican for the first time. When I talk about immigration, I want people to think about it. Think about it the same way that you would think about it if you're living here. If let's say, you know, 10,000 people were added into your community, what would happen if the government doesn't have systems that are set in place? When you look at what the city is dealing with, we're spending, when we had 12,000 migrants, we were spending $31 million a month at that time. We have 20,000 migrants today. So what is the price tag on that now? And we can't get solid answers to what it's costing us right now. The, the fact that they're calling them illegal is like, if you live in the U.S., it's not uncommon for people to be called illegal, which illegal just means you're undocumented. Mm. You, you know, you came in whether you're a refugee or uh, yeah, you came to seek, a, seek a, a, asylum or you overstayed your visa for whatever reason, you're called illegal for that or alien, um, which to mean that that's not your initial place. Yeah. So get them out of our communities because they don't deserve to be there. Downtown has three to four illegal families on every block begging for work and selling Kit Kat bars after a billion dollars was spent on them. Where is that money? Where is the money for the South Side and the West Side communities? Not another dollar for the illegals. If the crisis is so bad, the city council members who are so concerned to donate their salaries to the cause like a real public servant should. That's from a recent, uh, well, yesterday it was breaking live during this hour. That's from that city council meeting. And, and we could see everybody, but we played it for you anyway. Now we have so much more of it to play.
Uh, Illinois has spent more than $1 billion of Chicago tax money already on the people who are there. So the Illinois governor thinks he has the answer to it all. He's blaming Texas. Abbott willfully planned the arrival of these individuals in locations and at times that would engender the maximum chaos for the city of Chicago. Think about that the next time a politician from Texas wants to lecture you about being a good Christian. And they shouldn't leave it to the governor of Texas who has no goal but to sow chaos and destruction. With immigration, I think that the black community not like not wanting black people or thinking that resources that were supposed to be given to them are then given over to black people. On both sides, it could be true. It could be that they already lack resources while those few resources are being given to immigrants. But you also have to understand that the United States is a country that's built by immigrants. The country of, you know, the USA was built by immigrants. It's a nation of immigrants and the United States welcomes immigrants. Thanks, Queen V and Mr. Paradise for this opportunity to teach the black American family. King Nido is my name, and the question here is, was America founded on immigration? Yes, America was founded on immigration. The United States has a rich history of immigration, with people from all over the world coming to the country in search of new opportunities and a better life. From the early settlers who arrived in the 17th century to the waves of immigrants in the 19th and 20th centuries, Immigration has played a significant role in shaping the cultural, social, and economic landscape of the United States. Almost all the current inhabitants of the country can trace their ancestry and cultural heritage directly back to immigrants who arrived to America within the last 300 or so years. Many are descended from people who immigrated within the last century, and there has never been a period in the history of America where immigration was not constantly flowing. The Americas are unique for having undergone a period of almost complete depopulation before European colonizers and immigrants, along with African slaves, repopulated the continent, leading to the cultural actual genocide of many Native American groups, most of whom are now almost extinct. So regardless of what resources are available, mm. the, United, the nature of the United States is to support immigration and to support people and to give people a home that don't have a home. A mm. perfect example in 2010, uh, there was a huge earthquake that happened in Haiti and many of those um, you know, uh, people that needed um, a place to stay, food to eat, were brought over to Massachusetts and they stayed there. But mm. the effects of that were actually so big that eventually the, the city, that one of the cities that welcomed them had to build a new school because it was now new people that needed to be taken care of. So I think the hate towards Im immigrants is really not necessary because these people are seeking shelter. They don't have anywhere else to go. Yeah. If their countries were in a better position, you would see them. That's yeah. why you don't see a lot of immigrants coming from Canada into the U.S. because yeah. they have the resources that they need in Canada exactly. as opposed to people that are coming from, you know, it's like uh, poverty-stricken areas or areas that have um, war and conflict. Yeah. yeah. Actually, we've also witnessed a lot of black women speaking ill about the migrants in the country. And um, we've realized that these people are having hate because because of the little funds the government has to cut on their salaries. They're making a big issue out of it. Is it that the, the, the black Americans are lazy or something? Because I think that's not a thing. We know the weather in uh, Chicago. Right, we right. know how the winter treats them. But right. the government coming out and be like, we need to give these migrants shelter, what to right. live and stuff like that. Now, I'm not saying that I want the migrants to be misplaced. I'm not saying that I don't want them. I don't want them here. That's not going to help us. We got a school right here our kids go to. We don't know these people coming through here. Y'all can't track these people. Our kids are not safe. You're helping a fellow black. First of all, I want to say thank you for coming here. No, and every don't time thank us. We could have been doing something else. I don't know if I, I want to make sure I understood your question. You're asking where will people go right. when they're here. Right. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to answer that. Okay. Guys, can we give her an opportunity to answer Ms. Matthews' question, okay. please? 
So people, the, the people that we're talking about are human beings just like you. We, didn't, we know that. We know that. It is not us against them. We don't need you to tell us that. No, we don't need you. We don't need you to tell us that. We, it, it's not us against them. And that's the problem we don't care for. We don't care for that. We are oh. not insensitive. But we, 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 we got a problem with you thinking you're going to jam something down our throat. It's not like you have to know your black your black brother to help right. that person. It's just a little bit of that of their friends they're cutting off out of their salaries, but they're actually making a big issue out of it. And I don't understand that. It just bothers me. I'm like Why are black people in Chicago and some communities so angry? Why why is all this kind of anti immigrant sentiment coming up? And I wanna to explain to folks it's because if we cared as much about black people and had over the decades as we do about everyone else, we wouldn't be here. But the money from a 2021 budget surplus will only last one month. Many older people say it's time for a long-term plan and some state and federal help. With that, should taxpayers be concerned? Um, I think we should all be concerned anytime we're having to utilize this level of resources on a, on a temporary situation, especially with, uh, with not a real site of federal support coming. Hours after the meeting, Mayor Brandon Johnson offered no specifics. We're going to have to dig in a little bit deeper in the city of Chicago. But you have to understand, it's, there are areas where the resources are already limited. Yeah. And there's not always funding everywhere so it's almost like you if you were a father or a parent in a household and you already have six kids and your six kids are barely surviving mm. it wouldn't make sense for you to then go out and adopt four more kids but if those kids that you're bringing in it's a life or death situation then you'd bring them in and give yeah. them the little that you have yeah. so the immigrant situation has to be looked at you can look at it however you want to look at it but these are people that need help um, I don't know if if Chicago or the places that they end up going are the places that have the resources. Mm. But the issues with the U.S. once you're on American soil, you you can choose wherever you want to stay. Yeah, true. Um, and a, and a lot of times people want to stay in places that are crowded. Mm. It's like immigrants; they come in, they want to stay in Massachusetts, they want to stay in in, in New York, mm. while there are states that might have more resources, but nobody wants to live in Nebraska, yeah. nobody wants to live in Wyoming, nobody wants to live in Ohio. Sorry, Ohio. <laughs> nobody <laughs> wants to live, you know, like out there in in the midwest most mm -hmm. people want to leave either in california yeah. or in like the big cities so that's an issue because now you find that new york is is, is like packed you yeah. find that chicago is packed you find that massachusetts uh, the, the city of boston is packed so i think there has to be a collaboration with the entire like major cities and states mm -hmm. and find areas where these immigrants can uh, can live comfortably without actually sque squeezing the budgets of the um or of the towns or the cities that they're living in because if anybody that has ever um really studied how you know how budgets work you know that they they can only do so much and a huge number of people coming in you know perfect example we can go up to canada mm -hmm. and see the city of toronto is a packed with yeah, immigrants it's a packed one. yeah and and now they don't know what to do and they're asking people to go outside of the city because there are resources there these countries have the money but if we it's like it's if we get a hundred thousand people that come from outside of uganda and they all want to stay in kampala it's like that's a problem now okay. because if you bring them to masaka for example they might have you know space there and be able to do what they want but actually but actually you know you know when those people come come here yeah. When, when the refugees are brought in Uganda, they're actually not taken to those those um the brutal areas, the right. massacres and stuff like that. They're kept in Kampala. Let, right. let, let me give you an example of the Eletrians. They're staying in Kansanga. Those people are treated like you know heavens. Right, right. They're, they're given they're given shelter. They're right. given where to live. They're, they're given good education. According to a whole series of glowing headlines, Uganda is a paradise for refugees. Its policies, experts say, are among the most liberal in the world. Refugees can work and move freely around the country. Many of their children can access education and they are even given a small plot of land and the basic materials needed to build a house. Right. And actually, I don't understand how those people, most especially those black Americans, when they come here, they want to be treated like gods. They right. want to be treated like the heavenly. Right. They want to give. They want to be given good things and good right. stuff. But where actually we go there in that country, seeking for asylum, seeking for help, they're treating us like crap. They've been making a big deal out of it. Maybe they just saw that. 
actually you're just lazy it's not maybe you're lazy and you're being rude you're being bad and you are actually i'm having so much hate for that self preservation is key here's what we got to also understand and for any migrant coming to any country or any immigrant like myself self preservation is key now i'm not saying that the west african migrants are looking for help from the african american community but what i am saying is this people are going to self preserve themselves that means it's hard in new york city for african americans it's hard for jamaican americans it's hard for any american right and the taxpayers money are being paid out to support these people that are coming from Senegal. It's how we got to look at it. I know this is Pan-Africanism and we want to help our brothers and sisters, but we got to look at what the investment is. And Pan-Africanism as somehow must address what each side is getting. What are Africans getting? What are Caribbeans getting? What are black British getting? What's African-Americans is getting? If that cannot be solved by a tangible solution, Pan-Africanism has a hole that needs to be filled. And I'm going to tell you, when I'm coming over here to Africa or african Americans struggling in Africa, hey, listen, nobody's looking to give you a helping hand if things don't go your way. And it's gonna be the same with these migrants coming into New York City. People are gonna look at them like, hey, listen, black brother, we know that things is hard in Africa, but yo, those are my tax dollars going to fund you. And here's something else that has happened. Do you know that migrant families in New York City can get more than some military officers in war right now in Afghanistan? I know you don't believe me. I don't understand how you hate your fellow black. It just bothers me. <laughs> bugs me like right. hell. Right. It just leaves me so senseless. Right. You know, I, how I wish that you also, you also come to our country and we treat you the way you treat us. How I wish we do that. How I wish when you come to Africa, we treat you the way you, the way you treat us when we go there. You be picking us, you be picking up on us, on every little thing we do. You pick up, you pick up on every little thing. I don't understand. They be even be, they be calling us Buddhist crutches. They be calling us names, bro. They be, they be making a scene out of it, bro. They be, they be calling us names. They pick up on our accents. Right, right, right. They pick up on everything we do. Right. But let us not forget that you people, you are also African. You're black. You're True. like me. We both we both got black asses. Right. When we sit somewhere, a one man can say, right. bring out your black asses. <laughs> you're also going to stand up because you're right. black. That's right. You got to look at it like this. It's not going to be black Americans fault that migrants from any part of the world are there. Let me go back to the whole situation with Malcolm X. Because I started with that. I want to end with that. Africa must be successful for blacks here or blacks everywhere. And for Africa to be successful, it must mean that blacks must be allowed to do well where they're living and not coming to other places that may impede on other folks. That's what it means. And both groups should work together and want to work together. But situations like this create certain divisions. And again, this is not to blame Senegal or West Africans for looking for a better life, but it starts there. It starts with the conversation of, hey, we have been here. Our tax dollars fund here. We work here. You come in here, at least this particular group, you're coming here for nothing. And then our money is funding you to be here. And then if you do well, you start to have an attitude with me as if you're better than me when we helped you come here based on our tax dollars. That's the conversation. And I'm pretty sure that's how people feel. These people are making me spread hair, but actually I gotta say this out loud, that that treatment you be treating us the way you treat us should stop. Right. Should actually stop. Because on, on how much you make every single month, that's too little when the government right. says that we're gonna care of some of your friends to help the migrants and stop calling those people legal migrants they ain't legal they're not illegal they're legal migrants they're there because they gotta be there they're there right. because they're seeking for asylum exactly actually if they had if they had if they had an option of not being there would, yeah. actually they would choose not to be there black people black people stick out for each other and have to be united wherever i go in the world people do not look at me as a black american people look at me or any black person as part of the african world and so unless you open your mouth you don't get respect but like malcolm x said with a chinese person it was a time that chinese people were laughed at he talked about it you don't have a Chinaman's chance but in 1965 china started doing this thing in 2024 
you got all kinds of people studying Chinese and Mandarin in college now. It's a true thing. Now you won't find Swahili being studied as much as Chinese, but Chinese is a official business language in most places. They have the third largest currency base with the Chinese RMB. They have so many advantages. So when Chinese people show up in the world now, they get respect unlike 60 years ago. So instead of this being a reason to be dividing, we need to somehow figure out, and I know some brothers don't like this, but really we are stronger together. This is gonna be a complex process and we're gonna be put in some situations that are gonna be unfavorable. But the black world must look at this as an opportunity somehow to slowly come together so that everybody can work it out. To be an American, you can be born anywhere. So if you are born in Uganda, born in China, born mm. anywhere, you can come to the United States as you know, as an asylum seeker seeking for help and you can change your life. So on one side, I do understand that maybe the resources are limited and the resources are being taken away from people that also need them. We also understand that for most, most of the times people that are seeking asylum is a life or death situation. Okay. So I think for me, the, the issue overall has to be looked at it at a country, um, at a country level and find out what state has resources where immigrants can be allocated to a place where they can get the help they need, but also not squeeze the budget of uh, towns or cities that may not have the resources for them. The, the, the nature of the United States is to help immigrants, is to help people that are seeking for refuge, is to help people that need, he uh, need help, mm -hmm. is to help people that don't have a home, mothers, children, uh, boys, girls, men that need a place to stay because those, that is the fabric of what the United States is. Um, so if you take immigration out of the United States, it's no longer the United States because out of, you know, all of us, um, that live in the United States, majority of us were not born in the United States or were born to parents that were not born in the United States and they were immigrants at some point. So beware of black people and stay away from them. They are not good people is one of the first things that my mom was told when she came to this country. I am a first generation immigrant child. My parents came here back in 1993 after the Somali war. My parents came here as refugees and they were taught the ways of the Americans by white people who were helping them stay in hotels, giving food, shelter, et cetera, et cetera. My mom told me a lot of things that the guides would tell them. They would say, you know, these people, they're black. They get into a lot of crimes. I wouldn't suggest that you, you know, mess around with them. One day my mom was taking a permit class and just like the jail yard, the black people were together, the Mexicans were together, the Africans were with the Africans, the Asians with the Asians, whatever. And as the instructor was talking about, you know, driving and on the road, she said, um, just make sure that you're paying attention. And for you, she pointed to the Asians and said, don't laugh when you're driving, don't smile. The fact that immigrants come to the U.S. is not surprising. I think it's more on where are the resources that they need in the country. And um, it has to be taxpayers' money. So where else would it come from? As black people who have been hurt continuously by the city and country it loves, it ain't our responsibility to take care of everybody else. And anger. We don't want to have to recall anybody. We don't want to have to protest anybody, but we are not going to be ignored, Brandon, Mayor Johnson. Many in Chicago's black community and the city council speaking out against spending $51 million to house migrants, asking when will the help for them finally become a reality. And it cannot be put on the backs of the residents of Chicago without showing them that they're getting something out of this. Well, actually, we've seen the black city, the black citizens of Chicago um, destroying and coming up to um, saying bad things to the mayor, Brandon Johnson, and they trying to put him down and stuff like that. And we've also witnessed that during the council, the city council. Yeah. yeah. Oh, like how, how is that affecting the black community? So that is actually shedding um, a bad light because... I think there's enough resources for people, especially in the United States, mm. for immigrants to be able to come in. So for me, I don't see much of an issue of whether there is resources. I see it as a balance on where people are, where immigrants are coming. If black people are saying that they're not welcoming of immigrants, that's a problem. Because like I said, the United States is based on immigrants and immigrants will continue to come into the United States. I think it's about a million immigrants coming to the United States 
I think a million visas are issued every year for people to come into the United States, whether they're students or coming in as permanent residents or asylum seekers. So that's going to continue. It's more on where we can identify the resources to be put. What are your last reviews to, towards them, the black community? Right. So um, as I finish, something that I want to say is immigration is complicated. If it was easy, we wouldn't be having this conversation. Mm -hmm. It's complicated, um, but I really believe that bringing in different people with different views and different traditions can help build a nation. So what I think one of the things that makes the United States specifically a strong nation is because of that, because of immigration and because of people that come in. Because if you only rely on what you would consider natives, people that are born in the country, you're limited to the talent that you have. But if the United States can welcome, let's say, you know, what um, 100,000 engineers from India and, you know, welcome uh, 100,000 people from Africa, then they can really build a strong nation. So immigration isn't really an issue, but it's the way that it's being handled. Um, of course, it has to do with the number of people that come in at one time and the budgeting and the positioning and where people actually end up staying. Um, a lot of cities are overcrowded even before the immigrants. Now, adding in immigrants, it makes a situation that's messy. So there is some truth that's being you know, told when they say that Chicago, you know, maybe I don't know what the budget is. I don't know what, you know, Chicago plans on spending on immigrants. Yeah. I think all the major cities, all the states should come together and really think about this immigration issue and ask, wh how can we disperse? How can we bring in a lot of people, but spread them around the country so that the pressure is not felt by just one city or just or just one state, but you know, spreading. I'll, I'll give you an example. The city uh, I've, I've driven from New York, you know, from Massachusetts to Canada, and you drive six hours in the state of New York. Mm. So that's all land, and that's all like a place. Yeah. That, but guess what? Nobody wants to live there. Everybody wants to come into you know yeah, Manhattan yeah. and in the middle of the city. So yeah. that's gonna be my my take on that. Well, I love you all, my, be my beautiful black people out there. And I think the government is doing the right thing, like cutting off your fines and to come out and start helping out those, those migrants. Let's bow our heads in prayer. Heavenly Father, we come before you this afternoon. God, we give thanks to your holy name. We thank you for being able to work in this city. We thank you for being able to put the issues of the residents before you and before this council. God, we give thanks for all that you do for us. And God, we ask your mercy, we ask your blessings, and God, we ask your forgiveness. God, we know that we are not perfect people, but as we stand before you, Lord, we ask for your grace. And it's because we are imperfect people, Father, we need that grace. We ask that we can come before you boldly as we present the issues of our public. And we thank you for the opportunity to not only serve you, but to serve the people. I thank you for this opportunity to pray before your holy name. And I pray these things in your son's name. Amen. I've been your girl, Vanessa Gold Vibes, all over. And, I, and I'm so happy that you tagged along all the time. Well, don't forget the man himself, Mr. Paradise. Thanks for having me. So you can find me pretty much anywhere on social media um the one dot paradise um you can go to my website www.theoneparadise.com i'm on tiktok i'm on facebook i'm on youtube and i'm on instagram you can buy my merch thanks well, don't forget men and work is my youtube channel keep on liking subscribing sharing and leaving a comment on this video what do you think of this video peace i love you all and i will see you next time